Hi everyone, greetings from Denmark. We are from the Multisensory Experience Laboratory at Obo University, Copenhagen. We would like to present our paper, Virtual Womb Experiencing Human Sensory Development from a Fetal Point of View in Virtual Reality. Some pregnant individuals have difficulties developing and strengthening parental bonding, which is crucial for a healthy social development of the child and the child-parent relationship. This can in part be due to mental and or socioeconomic issues, making pregnancy hard to cope with. So we built a passive virtual reality experience, realistically simulating being a fetus inside a virtual womb. The goal of the experience is to promote feelings of calmness and safety in these pregnant individuals to help them develop mental surplus, increase their behavioral awareness, and remove the anxiety associated with pregnancy. The paper relates to current research and use of virtual reality in healthcare. Virtual reality therapy and rehabilitation shows promising results in effectiveness when paired with additional professional supervision. Virtual stimuli can trigger similar responses as real-life stimuli regarding phobias, anxiety, PTSD, or even autism, which we have done other studies on. The possibility of being able to reach and treat more people while being cost-effective, ecologically valid, enable greater control of the environment and variables, and be quantitatively measurable also influenced our research. Throughout our study, we met with several experts employed within the Danish healthcare system. They consisted of researchers of midwifery practices at the National Hospital Rishospital, midwives, caretakers, and social workers from the UCC School of Nursing and Midwifery, as well as from the Rodawa Pedagogical Development Center. They followed and supported the idea and concept and underlined the importance of the experience eliciting feelings of calmness, security, and safety in pregnant individuals to ensure a positive experience. We built the virtual womb that would replicate real-world visual and auditory elements from a first-person's perspective, providing almost literal immersion and presence as you embody and become the fetus. The embodiment would reflect what the unborn fetus can see, hear, and feel in different stages of pregnancy and fetal development. This is different from other implementations of looking inside a womb, where one acts as a spectator observing the fetus instead and not be the fetus itself. Both the visuals and soundscapes in many of these applications are also stylized and do not convey a realistic environment. For example, the fetus is sort of floating in space, and there is music and other unrelated sounds and noises as well as unrealistically loud heartbeats playing in the background. With further research and communication with experts, we defined the following. We defined the typical target group of behavioral therapy. We defined the importance of assessing mental health of pregnant individuals because it affects fetal health. And we defined the main focus of consultations revolving around fetal health and development and not so much on the mental health of parents, which can also be a problem. As a result, we would define a target group of vulnerable pregnant individuals that could utilize therapeutic interventions to strengthen the important parental bonds with their uh, unborn child, helping to induce empathy and behavioral awareness. The target group is individuals with few resources available for managing pregnancy and related factors, and with the possibility of having anxiety or depression. While there are already many programs that help such individuals, we see an aid for professionals in the form of behavioral therapy through virtual reality can help empathically materialize what it's like being the unborn child, the fetus inside the womb, which could strengthen the parental bond. Experts noted that special care should be taken not to reinforce stereotypes and let the experience be calming and secure, even when the design aims for portraying a realistic environment of the womb. The design approaches three aspects of realism, the extrauterine environment, the intrauterine environment, and the sensory development of the fetus. To help implement such biologically realistic details in our development stages, Together with traditional research, meetings with the experts helped co-design the application and experience. Uh, they gave feedback as to what elements of the experience would be realistic or unrealistic regarding immersion and presence, and what could facilitate and reinforce a positive, calming, and secure experience. 
Furthermore, theory on mediated experiences emphasized the importance of users feeling present in the virtual environment, as it contributes to the effectiveness of the experience. The experience replicates the development in sensorial elements of vision, audition, and haptics through fetal development weeks 14 to 35, which in total last seven minutes in virtual reality. For more details on the implementation itself, please see our paper. The visual element comprises a virtual model of a womb seen from the inside and features the sensory development of color vision as well as vision fidelity and acuity through implemented shaders and visual effects. Unlike other applications that only show the baby, making it look like it's floating in space, in our implementation you can see the womb all around you, making the space smaller and more realistic. The inside of the womb is showing light scattering through the stomach wall from external sources such as sunlight or flashlights. The body and hands of the fetus are visible, but there is no visual growth of the fetus. The auditory element consists of developing hearing through implementing spatial audio with filtering volume and frequencies, with both intrauterine and extrauterine sounds being played, such as heart rhythms, body fluids, and voices of the mother altogether with traffic and other external noise from the surrounding environment. These sounds aim to replicate the real sound more than other applications that omit sounds of body fluids, bowel movements, or maybe feature unrealistic heart sounds, etc. Now, there's a short demo here of the environment. Note that it's, of course, a better experience for you if you wear headphones and you are in a dark room, such as the participants of this experiment was wearing together with the head-mounted display. Så vi bare nok rent faktisk på frie lyset inden for maven. Så må vi vente sig. Kan du mærke, at dit barn bevæger sig ind i maven? The haptic element consists of developing the sense of touch and growth of increasing vibration and fidelity of sensing and feeling the movement and sway of the virtual mother's body. This is implemented through subwoofers playing low frequencies directly behind the recliner chair they were sat in to maximize the effect, also in, in regards to the position of the body. However, there is no implemented movement of the virtual fetus resulting in a passive experience, as you can see in this illustration. Participants were sat in a recliner chair in an anechoic room wearing the head-mounted display and were exposed to the experience for seven minutes with no interference, which was monitored digitally behind a wall by a researcher as seen in the illustration to the left. Embodied as a fetus, participants were only able to look around and see and hear the scripted events of the mother moving around a city as seen in the illustration to the right. There were no interaction or movement of hands or body in this experience. Different scripted elements highlight specific senses being introduced and developed in different stages of pregnancy to subconsciously let participants feel these sensory differences from the introduction of sensory development to just before reaching the stage of birth. For our experiment, we could not test on the intended target group of vulnerable pregnant individuals for ethical reasons, but we tested on pregnant participants and miscellaneous test participants as well as conducting an expert evaluation. The participants completed quantitative and qualitative evaluations. We used the iGroup presence questionnaire, and we used it to measure the realism and involvement in participants facilitating immersion and thereby presence. And we used the product reaction cards from the Microsoft Desirability Toolkit to gain insights into the subjective experience from participants. Results from the presence questionnaire showed that participants generally felt present and were physically immersed in the environment, with high scores on general sense of presence, spatial presence and involvement, but with a lesser score on perceived realness. The miscellaneous and the pregnant participants, they scored both higher than the experts, and that could possibly be because the experts were obligated as part of their function to relate more critically or skeptically towards the experience. 
they could focus more on, for example, the degree of realism and or the potential application of possibilities which might hinder their higher levels of presence. The product reaction cards evaluation showed positive feedback, but again showed an indication of the experts relating more critically and skeptically towards the experience. Indications of calmness, security, and safety were seen clearly in the results from both miscellaneous participants, but also pregnant participants and the experts expressing feelings hereof. Following interviews outlined positive emotional responses to events in the experience, like the following. One said that the event with the flashlight in the experience made them feel like they were the baby themselves. One said that it motivated them to continue singing and talking to the baby since they can actually hear what's being sung or uh, spoken to them. One person said that it made their pregnancy feel more real. And another one said that it was similar to what you've read about uh, and matching their own expectations. In the expert testing, two experts found some biological sounds to be too loud. Two others found the pacing to be a bit slow. One expert liked the events in the experience, uh, such as going to the doctor, the mother talking to other people, humming and singing to the unborn fetus, and as well as walking down the street and discover emergency vehicle sirens passing by, as well as visiting the train station. And they noted that some purposes of these auditory events could be to awaken certain nice feelings in target group participants. In all, results showed that both the pregnant participants and the miscellaneous participants experienced being present in the virtual environment, being convinced of the concept of embodying and becoming a fetus, not just observe as a third-person camera inside a womb. And they responded with feelings of safety and calmness as intended and hypothesized by the research and co-design. The experts were, however, not entirely convinced because of the limitations of the biophilic implementation, with the animation and 3D models in particular needing improvement to match their reality. We do recommend the following when designing the experience for employees or patients in the healthcare system, that a shared design approach is adopted as the experts provided valuable information on general field knowledge and theory, their current organization culture, any restraints on implementation, any ethical considerations, as well as ideas for product development and features. The next step in the research would be to assess parental bonding utilizing tools, for example, for mother-child bonding assessment. Furthermore, design ideas could focus on individualizing the experience by, for example, including customized scenarios matching the individual user's everyday life or modeling the fetus to represent the pregnant individual's own fetus. Finally, the experience could allow expecting mothers to experience live input from the other parent. To recap, this paper proposes using a virtual reality environment of a womb to simulate fetal sensory development from the fetus' own point of view. It was done to support the research of the possibilities of using virtual reality to promote behavioral awareness and strengthening of parental bonds in vulnerable pregnant individuals. The application was evaluated using miscellaneous participants, pregnant participants, as well as experts. And the results show that the environment was able to promote positive feelings of safety and calmness in the participants. The findings of the paper supports further research and use of virtual reality applications in behavioral therapy on proper target groups when aiding professional intervention, as the effects of use together with efficiency of implementation show promising and positive results, also even when environments are abstract and otherwise not physically accessible to experience in real life. So thank you very much for your time. We will be happy to answer the questions and initiate the discussion. Have a great conference.